Hello everybody in YouTube land, this is Michael Zingar from uh, 28mm Wargaming uh, Sci-Fi Channel. And basically today I'm going to talk about Vor the Maelstrom. Uh, this was a game put out by FASA. And the reason why I'm digging this relic up is because this bar none has the best campaign setting for anybody's sci-fi game. Uh, just to explain a little bit what's happening in that world is um, there's this pocket universe <clears throat> that basically absorbs planets and uh, pieces of solar systems uh, just what it needs to suck up and puts it into orbit of itself and basically sucks it into this center part that's a maelstrom. Um, it doesn't describe it as a god or a, just basically a force that seems mindless. And uh, what it basically picks is universes where there's a bunch of violence going on. So basically, you could have a piece of the Warhammer universe sucked in and then you got a reason to have the Chaos Marines to be there or you can have the Tau Empire be there. But, you know, <clears throat> years ago, uh, a lot of people I game with gave up on uh, Warhammer because who the hell wants to fight another Space Marine battle against Space Marines? Everybody applauds GW on how great their fluff is, but Majority of the battles that I see come to the tabletop make no sense whatsoever. All right, so from a narrative perspective, you can use the uh, Vor universe and basically have a reason to fight. Uh, everybody's trying to survive. It's a violent process uh, getting sucked into this pocket universe. Um, it's a good place for spaceship battles. It's a good place for... Uh, Skirmish warfare and mass warfare. Uh, basically, I've developed a, a crap load of fluff for my uh, human force of mercenaries that got sucked into the um, universal. Basically, let's uh, go over the book, show you what you can get. Um, these books are really cheaply uh, uh, gotten. I've seen go, I think I paid six bucks for this one. So, uh, I wore out my first copy, which actually had different uh, cover art, so let's talk about the table of contents. So basically there's a lot of fluff describing the actual Maelstrom, um, the different forces that they have, uh, basic model concepts, there's the rules of course. Vehicle rules, rules to make generic vehicles, which is a very important. Uh, there's a nice section on can uh, scenario rules, basically. Um, you know, it talks about strange alien weather, etc., etc., stuff like that. And that adds to the tabletop, you know. Uh, strange uh, planets that you land on, they're uh, totally crystal and... Uh, you know, for example, I've made a, a battle board where uh, uh, I was able to get these uh, little gallon uh, plastic jugs filled with rock candy. So I sprayed them down and created a lot of crystalline terrain from that and painted it all up. Um, you know, there's... Uh, well, let's, let's flip through and get into it. So basically, there's, you know, the basic introduction... Here's all the fluff about the actual Maelstrom. This game was uh, created by FASA, which did the, um, at the time they were doing all the uh, mechs for uh, Mech Warrior. So they, uh, but I guess something happened to the company that was like political. And, uh, this game was really big in its day back in the 90s, and then uh, the company died, and uh, it kind of all petered out. But I have many fond memories playing War. 
is basically all just thick, great fluff. Talk about different uh, weird locations within the Maelstrom. Which is awesome. And then uh, here's something that you can only do in sci-fi is... Well, I guess you could do it in fantasy too, but... Random creatures that end up walking on the battlefield and just... Uh, putting a monkey wrench in the... Uh, Whole uh, bat, you know, unexpected stuff. You know, I like unexpected things that happen in a scenario. Uh, basically, because it makes me think harder when I gotta fight the battle. So there's a whole host of creatures, and then that's a that's basically a beautiful art shot of. Uh, the Neo-Soviets, that's a force I've always wanted to build. And if you really, I mean, if you just dig this game, you can get every miniature they ever put out from Ralph Partha, the European uh, website. And you can get all those old uh, cool Ralph Partha fantasy figures and stuff like that. And uh, Starship uh, Armada, which uh, I got tons of those little spaceships and stuff like that, so... I mean, look at that. That's a, a, a rad trooper, a couple rad troopers, and then that's a chemical cyclops. Uh, um, Soviet force just went crazy with, uh, with you know, uh, chemical warfare. Went crazy with ra uh, radiation and just uh, all the horrible aspects of war they accentuated in this society. All right, the Union Forces, which represent uh, Mexico, America, and Canada. Let's look at their walker. Talk about them. They're the leader, the leader of this planet. There's the Neo-Soviets. There's a Rad Trooper. There's the Chem Sprayer Grunt. More fluff on that. And, uh, you know, with the uh, war... Um, You can dream up any force you want. Okay, this is race of the growlers. They're like cross between a big giant gorillas and dinosaurs. Those metal models were fabulous, but they are getting pricey and hard to find. So there's another Zenki. There's the crystal shard. And I'm going through races quick because here's the uh Ferrons. This is where uh Gaze Workshop stole the concept of uh, their Necrons. Games Workshop hasn't thought up original idea in 20, 30 years. There's Mashers, which are cave techno boots. The Golem. <clears throat> now, here's an army that I uh, modeled up and uh, have miniatures that I can do. Uh, Raffin came out with a group of uh, Space Orcs. And uh, I basically use them to do the golem. That's actually two beings, the top part, kind of a master blaster kind of thing from uh, from Mad Max. Through a slave race to the golem. They never made models for them, so here's a quick shot of the models. They're definitely worth picking up. A lot of them are metal. I prefer metal models. I guess I'm showing my age. But, uh, okay, then. Gold. Uh, everybody should read this in this book about the golden rule. I am so sick of going to conventions and hearing 40k players yell at each other. So, basically, standard uh, setup and stuff like that. So, you know, the it's a good game. It's got standard dynamics as far as, like, uh, uh, rules and playing and stuff like that. Nothing really that special about it. It's totally workable. But it does have a nice, uh, 
way you can generate vehicles so all your own you know say like you buy a tank at the dollar store and you want to um stand it up you can do it for this game which is nice now they got a really great section about talking about making your own scenarios uh, some templates to use then terrain features tables and then all the different weird things that can happen in the universe which is spectacular and uh, I have their um, scenario guide that came in the box set there's more charts in there so this really adds to the flavor and you know people don't think about this stuff anymore weather and terrain is very important to the game uh, there's different effects that can happen and adds to the tactical situation which is awesome you know I guess I'm old and jaded, but Christ, you know, I uh, Slugfest, where you just do a grind, where you're just throwing forces against forces, I don't have any interest in that anymore, you know? I've seen it all. I want I want uh, some spice, some flavor, my friends. Uh, good rules about running a campaign. So, uh, that's always awesome. I don't mind objectives, losses, and some crazy shit where, like, uh, this happened. This is the last time I ever played Games Workshop in a store. Uh, I had some uh, Chaos Army. I pretty much almost tabled the guy. I had to protect the objective. My guys were all around the objective. It was uh, in a building, a two story building, ruin thing, you know, Game Workshop's uh, like corner building train. And uh, so the last turn, guy flies a jet bike in there because he's within six inches. His, and it was his captain. And he was basically hiding for most the half. After I almost tabled him, what was left was hiding. So he flew his jet bike close to the uh, thing. He was within six inches of one of the objectives. So we won. Now, how the hell is that considered a victory? You know what I'm saying, so. Yeah, that was my first game in a tournament, and after that, I said, uh, "Screw you guys, I'm not, I'm not playing." I picked up my models and took them home. Okay, here's another great reason to get this book: a custom force generator. You can use the points in the games that you want to do. You know, just figure out how did they did the stats and stuff like that. Take a look at the concept. You guys are smart. Figure it out. You know, so it's not just some. Random information they actually took the time and did a good idea about it You know uh, what suck those they use these like turtle guys as an example You know they should just picked a, a standard uh, marine give you some uh, strategies They talk about uh, prepping metal miniatures in case you guys don't know how to do it Which I think is good Because they just uh, expect uh a lot of games expect you to know how to do stuff, and that's why we don't get a lot of new players. So, here's some four li force lists for all our races. Which are somewhat interesting, I guess. But, uh, basically, you know, I use No Limits Rule System, which is basically a free, downloadable, uh, sci-fi rule system. It's the best I've ever uh, seen. It's less buggy, and you can do anything from a, a grunt to a, a titan, like I like to say. But here's something that's spectacular. Here's the quick reference guide on the back of the book. How smart is that? That is smart, you know? So basically, um, this is a great universe to play in. You can modify it. It's loose enough. You can write your own fluff. Uh... The tables for uh, the battles for setting up the scenarios is awesome. Uh, gives you an idea how to generate forces. So basically, uh, this book gets a two thumbs up. And I absolutely love it. So uh, thank all you guys for watching. Um, 
basically, uh, if you got any ministries you want to donate, I'll be happy to give them home. Uh, you know, if you need me to pay the shipping, I'll be happy to take them in. Uh, I'd like to add them to my collection. And what I do, uh, my wife works at a volunteer group for uh, uh, kids. So, you know, it's basically like a boys club, girls club kind of thing. And uh, it's nice in the winter time. I bring in some of my miniature games. Um, and kids being kids, you know, I get some stuff stolen now and again. So if you got uh, stuff that uh, you don't love anymore and are never going to do, uh, don't need them to me. I'd, be, I'd love to paint them up and uh, put them on the show. You know, if you do give stuff, I'll show you. I'll give you credit. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, maybe I can use some of these ventures to take down to the kids uh, so I can create some more uh, war gamers. All right. Uh, may the dice be with you. Please like and subscribe. And you guys have a great day.